you guys ask my export settings, you ask my process for exporting video for YouTube, this is what I do. So hopefully these settings help you out and in the end, get you a better quality video on YouTube. What's up YouTube, it's your boy BMAX. So one of the questions I get asked all the time on this channel are questions about my video quality. What my workflow is for editing and then exporting videos for YouTube. And a lot of you guys have actually asked about my specific export settings as a result of looking at some of the cinematic vlogs that I have published to this channel. Which if you haven't seen already, you could click the card annotation that's gonna pop up in the top right hand corner of your screen. If you click that, that will bring you to my cinematic vlogs video playlist. But it's a valid question. A lot of you guys were asking about my video quality and my export settings after watching videos like that. I'm gonna share my export Export settings with you, show you the process I go through to export every single video for this YouTube channel. So hopefully you end up with the best quality video you can on your channel. So fire up Adobe Premiere Pro, get ready to export your video. If you don't already have Adobe Premiere Pro, you could actually try it out for free as part of Adobe's free 30-day trial of Premiere Pro. You can click the link in the video description box below that will bring you directly to Adobe's free 30-day trial of Premiere Pro. You could try it out if you want before you buy it. But once you fire up Adobe Premiere Pro, once your video is fully edited, check this out. This is my process for exporting videos for YouTube. All right, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is a cinematic vlog that I have fully edited and uploaded to this channel, Halloween in Salem, one of my personal favorites. It's fully color graded, the transitions are all set, it is ready for the tube. So here's how I tackle my exports and what settings I use for the best quality video playback on YouTube. To start things off, you're just gonna go to File, Export, Media, and then your Export Settings box is gonna pop up. In here is where all the magic is gonna happen for the final export. I usually just run down this list over here on this side, just go through every setting. Now I do have a preset save for my export settings, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just gonna run through these settings from scratch. First things first, let's start off at the top right here. Match Sequence Settings, you're gonna use this in case you're timeline is the exact same settings of what you're going to be exporting to. Usually the two are different for me, so I make sure not to have match sequence settings checked. And format is just your encoding format. It's the codec you're going to be exporting to. You will usually change this depending on the codec for whatever the website you're uploading to wants or whatever your client prefers. For YouTube, the recommended codec setting is H.264. So we're going to give YouTube what it wants and keep the format at that. The more closely these settings match what YouTube wants, the less likely it is that YouTube will actually butcher the final video when it comes to its compression. Next up, we have output name. This is pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to click this, name the video file, and tell Premiere Pro where you want to export it to. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just putting it on my desktop, naming it Halloween in Salem. Moving right along, make sure you have export video and export audio checked for obvious reasons. That way you have video and audio in your final file. And then down here, this is the summary tab right here. This actually gives you, as the name suggests, an overall summary of what you're outputting to, what you're exporting to, and then of course what your source footage was. This is a nice little box to refer to before you click the final Q or export button, just to make sure it's looking right. But we'll check that later on. Moving on down here, we have effects. This is where you can apply effects to your final video export. I never use this at all. Any effects I'm applying to my video, I'm applying on the actual timeline itself. That way I have full control and can preview the effects before exporting them. That's how I recommend going about it. I mean, you could do whatever you want. I just personally don't touch the effects tab at all. So we'll click video, go to this next. Now this is where the fun really starts to begin. As you can see from the source footage up here, this video was actually shot in 4K. So I wanna preserve that resolution, preserve that quality, making sure the export video dimensions are the same resolution as my source footage right here. But you might wanna actually do 4K anyway, even if you shot it in 1080, and this is what I mean. Now here's something I wanna talk about quickly, something to keep in mind here, this is kind of a pro tip. Just hear me out for a second. It is known that YouTube plays back different resolution video at different bit rates. Basically, bit rate is how much information is in the video file that you're viewing. The higher the bit rate, the more information in that video file, essentially, the higher the quality. The higher the bit rate, it depends on a couple things, but in general, the higher the bit rate, the higher quality of the video. So having said all that, YouTube actually plays back 4K video at a higher bit rate than 1080. I personally researched this in the past, and I can honestly say when I used to work only with 1080, I work with all 4K now, but in the past, with 1080, when I would watch upscale 1080 at 4K resolution, meaning I was taking my 1080 video, upscaling it to 4K and uploading it to YouTube, that 1080 footage looked better when played back on 4K when it was upscaled, compared to how it looked on 1080. And supposedly that's because of the higher bitrate playback we have on YouTube 
at 4K resolution. Now, I don't wanna get too detailed here. If you don't understand any of this, don't worry, you can skip over this part. But for those of you who are following along or if you understand what a bit rate and resolution is, if your computer could handle it, you might wanna try upscaling your 1080 footage to 4K because you might get a little bit higher quality video playback on YouTube with the upscaled 4K footage rather than if you just gave YouTube the native 1080 file. Something to keep in mind. So I'm selecting the 4K resolution here, 3840 by 2160. Whether I'm working with native 4K footage or native 1080 footage, that's what I'm exporting to. Totally up to you, but in the very least, I would strongly advise you select the width and height, the resolution of whatever your native source files are. So if you shot in 1080, I would recommend at least exporting in 1080. Don't go any lower resolution than that. Next up, we have frame rate. And you notice these little check boxes over here on the side. If you click these check boxes, if they're checked, that just means that this setting is going to match whatever your source footage is. As you can see, I have a lot of these checked. We'll get into that in a second though. Frame rate, as you can see, 23.976. That's what I'm exporting to because that's what the source footage was. I shot this entire cinematic vlog on my Sony a6500, which captures 4K at that frame rate. So I match the frame rate, 23.976. Field order, you're gonna wanna make sure this says progressive here. You don't want any interlaced video and YouTube actually prefers progressive and doesn't want interlaced video. But that's important, make sure progressive is selected. Moving along, aspect. This is pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure square pixels 1.0. I'm not even gonna get into explaining the differences between the other settings. You want square pixels 1.0. So just make sure that's selected. TV standard, again, this gets pretty technical here. In general, if you're in the USA, Canada, or Japan, you're gonna be clicking NTSC. Anywhere else, you're probably gonna be clicking PAL. This basically has to do with frame rates for TV broadcast purposes. Doesn't make a huge difference here for YouTube purposes, but it's a pretty simple selection. USA, Canada, Japan, NTSC. Otherwise, you're doing this PAL setting over here. But moving right along, profile. Now, this is one you're gonna to wanna to change. I'm using a profile of high. Two reasons, YouTube actually asked for that. They asked for a high profile. And also, I've noticed in my experimentation in the past that using a high profile actually leads to higher quality videos. So make sure profile high is selected. Next up, we have level. As a general rule of thumb, you're gonna to wanna to select the lowest level possible for whatever your resolution is. So for instance, here, 38 by 40, 2160, 4K. The lowest level I could have is 5.1. So that's what I'm gonna be using. Render at maximum depth. Now, this is an interesting setting right here. You have people who argue for or against this checkbox right here, whether you should select it or not. If you want to save time, technically you could uncheck it, but I do think from my experience that leads to a lower quality video. If you can see from the description here, it says right here, rendering at maximum bit depth improves the video's quality but increases how long encoding takes. It definitely does take longer to render at maximum depth, but I found that it is worth it for the little bit of extra time to render at maximum depth, so I always select that. Moving on to bitrate settings now. Here is where the party really begins. I did a lot of research on bitrate settings. What were the best bitrate settings for YouTube? And here's what I came up with. Bitrate encoding, I'm always selecting VBR two pass. Now you could do constant bitrate, which is what CBR stands for. VBR one pass, which is variable bitrate, one pass, meaning Premiere Pro only goes over the process once or VBR two pass, which means basically there's two different passes that Premiere Pro is doing. The first of which is like an analyzing process. The second of which is where Premiere Pro is actually going through with the encoding. So in a nutshell, without going overboard on detail here, basically do not select CBR constant bitrate unless your camera actually films in a constant bitrate. My camera, a Sony for instance, films in a variable bitrate. So it makes sense to give Premiere Pro the option to allocate more data to the shots that are a little bit more busy, perhaps with a little bit more movement or a little bit more detail and less data to the shots that are more static. There's an argument whether VBR one pass or VBR two pass actually makes a difference. It does take substantially longer to encode VBR two pass than it does VBR one pass. Basically, I don't think it could hurt to have VBR two pass turned on. You're just giving Premiere Pro more time to actually efficiently encode your video. And since I'm usually exporting my videos overnight anyway, I just use two pass. My thinking is if that VBR two pass could potentially lead to higher quality video and I'm not short on time, why not take the chance? If you don't have the luxury of time, however, you're probably gonna wanna select VBR one pass and you'll be fine with that. Target bitrate and maximum bitrate, these are interesting settings right here. For the target bitrate, I always set this setting at whatever the bitrate was of my native footage. So for instance, I shot this cinematic vlog on my Sony that films 4K footage at 100 megabit per second bitrate. So I'm making the target bitrate exactly that, 100. If for some reason I filmed this vlog on another camera that happened to film at a higher bitrate, say like 150, I would change the target bitrate accordingly. Whatever the highest bitrate footage I have on my timeline is, that's what I set the target bitrate to. 
too. So 100 for the Sony a6500 in this cinematic vlog. And then maximum bitrate, because we're working with variable bitrate footage, the bitrate is going to fluctuate a little bit. To preserve that bitrate, you might want to bump up the maximum bitrate just a little bit. I max that out, only because if there's an area that requires a lot more information to encode, and if it looks better that way, I let Premiere Pro do it. I give it full permission. I bump that up, I max out at 300. That way the busier shots, shots with a lot more detail or a lot more movement could potentially end up looking better. So a good way of looking at this is target bitrate is like the average of what Premiere Pro will aim to encode your video file at. And maximum bitrate is the max you will let Premiere Pro encode the file at if there is a section on your timeline that requires a little bit more information to encode and look better. Moving along to advanced settings, I don't touch that VR video. This video is not virtual reality, so I'm not selecting that either. Let's move over to audio. Now audio is just as important as video. Do not neglect your audio settings. YouTube requests AAC, so I select that for audio format. Moving on down here to basic audio settings, I select audio codec AAC to match what we have for the audio format settings up here. And the sample rate, I usually set this at the highest it will go. For this is 48,000 hertz, so I select that. Channels, make sure it's in stereo. You can even do 5.1 if you wanted to, but I usually do stereo. Scrolling down, audio quality, make sure that puppy's set to high. You want high quality audio. And then bitrate settings, back to this. I actually will set this to the highest it will go, which is 320. That could potentially make your audio sound better, so just set the bitrate to whatever the source footage was, or just set it at 320, or whatever the maximum setting you want is. And then precedence, you could look into this to pick whichever one's best for you. I just select bitrate. Moving to the next tab, multiplexer. I don't touch this, I just make sure under basic settings, multiplexer it says MP4, and for stream compatibility, I just make sure it says standard. Captions, I don't do anything with the captions in Premiere Pro, so we skip that. Publish, now I'm not gonna get into too much detail here, and I really don't wanna cover this section too much because this section is completely hit or miss, especially when it comes to YouTube. But basically what this feature is supposed to allow you to do is upload as soon as your export is done automatically to these different platforms. You could try it if you want to, experiment, see if it works for you, but it's completely hit or miss for me. I've just been getting in the process of exporting and then uploading manually. Sometimes it works though, and if it works for you, it's definitely worth checking out. Down here, these final settings we have to dial in here. Make sure you have use maximum render quality on. This will make sure if you're using different resolutions in your timeline, like I am with the regular 4K and slow-mo 1080, that when you're upscaling the 1080 to 4K, or if you happen to be working on another timeline and you're downscaling, whatever you're doing, if you're upscaling or downscaling, if you're working with multiple resolutions on your timeline, I highly recommend you select use maximum render quality. That will make sure that Premiere Pro is actually analyzing and processing the downscaling or upscaling of your footage properly so that in the end, it will look better. Use previews, make sure this is not selected. This is in case you wanted to use the previews on your timeline so that you could actually potentially save time on your export. It will use the previews that you already rendered. It sounds good in theory, but in general, my timeline settings, like I said before, are not the same as my export settings. So to prevent any issues there, I don't use use previews. I just leave that unselected. I don't have anything else selected down here. The last thing I'll do is look at time interpolation. Basically, this is just a way to tell Premiere what to decide to do if you have multiple frame rates and they aren't matching up for your export settings. For most situations, I would just recommend selecting frame sampling for this. This means frames will just be doubled in certain situations in cases where frames are missing or Premiere Pro needs them to export a video. I'm just going to keep this simple. Use frame sampling in most situations. And the very last thing I will do is make sure over here where it says source range, make sure that says entire sequence. There's been a couple times where I haven't had entire sequence selected and only a part of my timeline was exported. So make sure source range says entire sequence. That means your entire timeline is going to be exported unless you only wanted a specific part of your timeline to be exported. Then you could select the in and the out so that a certain area is all that's getting exported. But for this, I want the entire video to be exported. So I'm selecting entire sequence. And now is the moment you've been waiting for. Over here, you can see the estimated file size. As the name suggests, this is how large the file Premiere Pro thinks it will be. And then you have two choices here. You could either queue it up, which will send this export over to Adobe Media Encoder, or you could export it right within Premiere Pro. I have found Adobe Media Encoder to be a little bit more stable, potentially a little bit higher quality. So for me, I queue it up and send it over to Adobe Media Encoder, but you could export it and start it right here in Premiere Pro if you want but I click Q. A couple seconds later, Adobe Media Encoder will open up with your export right here ready to go. You just click this green play icon and your export will start. And now we wait. That's pretty much all there is to my export process when it comes to exporting videos in Premiere Pro for YouTube. Hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you got a few tips and tricks that you're gonna use to help you get better video playback quality on YouTube. And I hope this gave you a little insight onto the settings I use, why I use them, and the overall process for how I tackle video exports. Now, a little disclaimer here, some might argue that this whole process is a little bit of an overkill. In some situations, yes, but in general, I disagree. I think if you give YouTube the highest quality video possible, the compression that YouTube does 
does on that video, you know, when you upload a video and it says processing video, that's YouTube compressing that video. And I think if you give YouTube the highest quality video possible, YouTube's not gonna butcher that video as much as it does some videos that just completely kills the quality. But you guys asked my export settings, you asked my process for exporting video for YouTube, this is what I do. So hopefully these settings help you out and in the end, get you a better quality video on YouTube. If you wanna take a look for yourself at some of YouTube's upload and coding settings, I'll be sure to leave a link to that article in the video description box below, so check that out if you're interested. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. It's a fun time. We have a fun time here. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my next video, just as soon as this one is done exporting. Could be here a while.